أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم The beaver will also come to Islam. When I really sit in my room and I'm alone and I can just like, God, are you there? Like, That's right the Birmingham now. manuscript. You know about that. Yeah, huh? yeah, yeah. You're looking at one of the oldest fragments of the Quran ever discovered. It's written on parchment, most likely made from sheep or goat skin. And it's been dated by experts as being more than 1300 years old. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Repeat that again. The, anybody what? If anybody is sincerely looking for the truth and nothing else but the truth, the only answer, the only way that you, the only thing you could come upon is Islam. Alhamdulillah, brothers and sisters, we've acquired the future Dean Center property and we want to get the masjid open first. It's all coming along. We're installing the doors. We can make wudu. We've installed the carpets. We have many details to finish up, but it's coming along. Alhamdulillah, we need a new roof. We need new windows and we need a minbar. That's right. We need a minbar for the masjid. Now, if all of you want to be a part of history and help build a house of worship, build a masjid for the sake of Allah, so Allah, the Creator can build for you a house in Jannah. Click the link below, donate right now. May God Almighty Allah reward all of you. Assalamu alaikum, greetings of peace. Welcome to the Dean Show. And I have an exciting episode for you as always with my next guest, Drew Davis, or Amin Davis. Check this out. He was a professional Hollywood actor since six years old. He's been in the Hollywood industry with the likes of Andy Garcia, Ivan Laura, if I mess up these names, Forrest Whitaker, Forrest Whitaker yeah. Kingstown with Jerry Henner. Uh, he's been in the Disney movies. I've been really out of touch with a lot of these actors and a lot of these programs, but some of you might recognize some of these, the uh, Oprah Black, HBO, and the list goes on. And he was searching for purpose, purpose of life. And check it out. He's here on the Dean Show. We have one God is named Allah, Allah. And his final message is Muhammad Peace be upon him This is our religion, Islam, Islam This is the Deen Show Girl, I've been on all the work that you're doing When I was ready to talk about it, I would only talk to you And I was explaining how much respect I have for the faith of Islam Welcome to the Deen Show The Deen Show Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as wa How you doing, young brother? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. I'm doing great. So, uh, quite a, a resume here for, since six years old. Yeah. yeah uh, that, is that when like Miley Cyrus, uh, Justin Bieber, they all started at that young age, right? Yeah, I, I think I might have even started younger. Yeah. Even if you started younger before yeah. Justin and all these guys. Yeah. Not, I mean, they're older than me, yeah. but in terms of the an age of starting, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. But uh, so, um, what led you down this path now? Because people, you're 19 years old, mm -hmm. and usually you see what happens when you look at many of these uh, Hollywood Disney stars. They start to grow up, they get the spotlight and the fame, and next thing you know, it's like, hold on, they're living the American dream, but it turns out to be the American nightmare. They go yeah. down drugs and alcohol, and all the other doors open up of not so uh, many of the good things, but the bad things. Yeah, subhanAllah. It's, uh, it's really it's sad to see. Um, you know, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. I mean, I mean, I mean, um, I think for me, you know, subhanAllah, I, I, I actually, I think my free time is something that I took very valuable and, and, and was very careful about how I used it. And my parents, alhamdulillah, instilled that in me from a young age. Um, and so, you know, subhanAllah, when, when you, when you grow up in the industry, um, there's actually a, a portion of your money, a large portion of your money that has to get put in a, into an actor trust, a youth uh, fund, basically, mm -hmm. for to, to protect peop the children from their parents, you know, taking their mm. money and stuff. So, so it goes in a trust. It goes in a trust that you can't touch until you're 18. Mm -hmm. um, and so, alhamdulillah, I came, I, I turned 18. I had, and this is what happens with a lot of people that are young child actors. They turn 18, they get a big chunk of money. They have a lot of free time. 
they might even be working on something uh, or have a, a continuous role and a recurring role in a show and they just have free time nothing to work for and really are just enjoying enjoying life and so the first thing that it comes down to for a lot of people is how do I maximize my pleasure and enjoyment? And so for a lot of people that the maximum way to enjoy life for them would be drugs to experience, you know, a, a high in that in us in a moment. Um, and subhanAllah for me, I think that, you know, who, who knows, I might have even gone down that path um, like later on. But Alhamdulillah, you know, I had a friend of mine who I just finished filming in Calgary. This was, I, I had just turned 18, or I had finished, turn, I, this was the year I turned 18. I had a friend of mine, um, after I finished filming in Calgary, I came back home to Toronto. And he asked me, just, what do you believe? What, what's your opinion on God and religion? And I told him in that moment, you know, I, maybe there's a God, maybe there isn't. We don't know, there's no proofs or evidences. So I'm not going to, I wouldn't follow a religion or say I believe in God. Because there's no way to find, there's no way to prove it. Um, and uh, subhanAllah, I, I got home that night and uh, I, that question just stuck in my head. I started to realize that I believe there were no proofs. I believe there's no evidences for the existence of God or religion. But I never did any research into, you know, any of the proofs or evidences or listened to anyone who said that there were proofs. I just assumed everybody accepted the fact that even if they were religious, it was based off of blind faith. Um, and so I decided with my free time that I had now, I was going to dedicate it all to researching uh, religion and finding the objective truth. And that's what I did. And five months later, Alhamdulillah, I came out of my room with uh, being a Muslim. Alhamdulillah. Let's reverse a little bit. Sure, what got sure. you into acting? Yeah, you, you... yeah. Uh, so my parents used to be, well, my dad used to act. Your father was an actor? My father was an actor. Uh, my mom is a musical director, and they now run a, an after-school program, uh, a musical theater after-school program. And my parents just put me in at a really young age. They had connections with uh, my agent at the time, who's still my agent now. Uh -huh. um, and she kind of just took me onto her roster, started submitting me for things, and right away I was booking movie and gig after gig. And the whole time, I never felt pressured by my parents to stay inside, to stay in it. I just absolutely loved it. I, I loved being on set. I loved acting. I loved the film and TV world. Um, I loved stepping into a completely different character's shoes for a moment in time and just trying to imagine and put myself in their position in life. Um, and so I just stayed with it. And mm -hmm. alhamdulillah, it worked out. <laughs> did you did you meet a lot of these uh, famous? Uh Childhood actors I mentioned. Did you meet anybody like uh, uh, I never Justin met. or My Myrie or what? I don't know the uh, new up and coming ones. Have you met? Yeah, I didn't work a lot with uh, other child actors. A lot of the time, I was playing. Um, I was playing when I was younger. I was playing the child in, in like in of some of the more A-lister actors yeah. um, uh, that were older. So like you had mentioned, you know, uh, Andy Garcia, Eva Longoria, Forrest Whitaker, Jeremy Renner. Yeah, I've seen um, a lot of uh, some of his film. Andy Garcia. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's a very great. he's a list. So you have like ratings for these actors. A, B, C. He's listed as an A actor. Uh, I believe so. Yeah. Jeremy Renner is as well. He Which played, one is Jerry? Uh, he Renner? plays Hawkeye in the Marvel movies. If you've uh -huh. ever seen any of them. I know this uh, Whitaker, Forrest Whitaker. Forrest Whitaker. He's the African American. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He's in a lot of stuff as well. And Sir Patrick. So how what, you spent some time with obviously with them? Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. And how they, was how was it hanging out with them? Oh, it was. It was they're they're all amazing people. Uh -huh. Honestly. Um, you know, a lot of the time being on set, it's they take it very seriously. Yeah. You know, so it's it's not a lot of the time you don't really get the opportunity to. It's not like you're off filming and then you're you're hanging out and chatting. They're they're very dialed in on being there for their craft and their work, but at the same time they're very kind and uh, and Forrest Whitaker and pa Sir Patrick Stewart as well. Another one that I truly, you know, I cherished a lot of time with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We hear a lot of times the, the scandals that go on in Hollywood. Were sure. you ever exposed and seeing some of these things? I never was, but I do know, I, I know people that have spoken about it. Yeah. Um, you know, like whether it's um, like people that worked more on the financial side that had to deal with certain people that might have, obviously I don't, I don't want, I'm not trying to get uh, deleted, yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, certain people that have spoken about, you know, weird things that they've run into or homes that they've been in where they see a lot of you know whether it's satanic or uh, yeah, things like that mm -hmm. but me personally I've never I've never seen it or been exposed to it 
probably because I was so young, they kind of shield. People. Yeah, I recently had a guest. He was also a part of that uh, industry, and he was mm -hmm. talking about this. Uh, a lot of, lot of the people in this industry, okay, they go away from worshiping God, the Creator, or believing in God. They mm -hmm. cover up what we say, that fitra, that innate nature, mm -hmm. but then they go and do, you know, other things, you know, yeah. um, black magic, uh, witchcraft, yeah. strange, strange things, you yeah. know, demonic things. Yeah, it's really, it's... it's. You've heard about that? You've seen... Have you I've, seen, I've heard about heard it from it, yeah. other people, but me yeah. personally, I have never yeah. seen it. But, yeah. Yeah. yeah, scary. So you wanted to now... You didn't cover up that innate disposition that we're all born with. And you went down, first you started, you wanted to confirm that it wasn't a delusion because you were talking about, I was watching a little bit of your um, your program with Bona, and you were saying that people who believe in God, who are around you, they would they would kind of mock that, right? It was like something that uh, people made fun of, and it was, yeah. you think you're delusional or something? Yeah, yeah it became oh. honestly a, it became honestly like, an, a superiority complex mm -hmm. that I just felt so comfortable with because it wasn't challenged by anyone. Yeah. You know? And so everyone around me is an atheist. Everyone believes the same thing. There's no proofs. There's no evidences. If you believe in God, that's good for you, but just know you believe in fairy tales. You know, mm -hmm. this, this is the, this is the stance that everyone around me had. And even the people that would claim to be religious would still hold that stance. It was, it, to me now, I look back. I, I look back, and even I speak with some of my friends who might have been Jewish or Christian, and we'll talk, and they agreed with me more from my agnostic atheist uh, stance than they do now. You know, I would tell them before, you know, there's no proofs or evidences. We can't know for sure, so I'm never going to follow a religion. And they would respect that more than me saying, no, I believe if anybody is looking for the truth, sincerely, they will become a Muslim. Mm -hmm. That's the only answer. And now they're like. What's wrong with you? You know. You Repeat that again. The, I, anybody, what? If anybody is sincerely looking for the truth and nothing else but the truth, the only answer, the only way that you, the only thing you could come upon is Islam. Yeah, one hundred percent. And that's uh, the complete submission and surrender to one and only one God. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. So we'll get into uh, how you really you took a deep dive, but I want to get your reaction to this. We, I mentioned his name. Sure. And he's somebody also who he it seems like he believes in God. Mm. So maybe if he if he uh, comes across this video, maybe he'll look into uh, the way of life that now you, you're talking about inshallah. that's based on proof and evidence. Yeah, inshallah. And uh, maybe this uh, Justin Bieber will also come to Islam. When I really sit in my room and I'm alone and I can just like, God, are you there? Like, I feel this connection with something that's a higher being. It just and picture it as being a perfect thing. Yeah. It just puts an ease to my soul that's like, I can't describe. Special. It's special, yeah. Justin that's, Bieber. Yeah. And I don't mean to be weird and like... No. This is, you're talking to a, a, a guy who was raised within the Catholic Church. I went, you know, uh, 10 it's, years of Catholic school, weird, man. Weird, dude. Yo, I went to church every morning, man, for many, many years. Yeah. What, what did you, did you have any of those experiences? So first he's talking, starting off talking about like not being able to trust people who's wanting something, yeah. right? But then he's talking about spending that qual that time alone and a yeah. higher presence. And well, absolutely, absolutely. You, you know, subhanAllah, even, even I think the time that I felt it the most was when I actually went on the search. Mm -hmm. Because I think I, at the start, coming from being an atheist, I didn't believe in God, right? And so at first, I'm looking for proofs and evidences to believe in God. And so, you know, I, I once I accepted that as a fact, there because that was the start, right? There, I realized there's a necessity for the existence of a creator of the universe. Once you realize that, then looking into religion or looking any further, you know, even during that time, you know that if there is a God, that you're now doing something for the sake of him. Even if you don't, even if you're not following a religion yet, I'm going on this search with the intention to get closer to God, with the intention to find the objective truth. And if that objective truth is God, then I'm asking God to open my eyes up to that truth, right? And so even through this whole search of not even being religious, I already started to feel like it's, a, it's an internal connection that you have just knowing that you're working towards getting closer to somebody. Mm -hmm. You know, even though you don't exactly know what it is that you're working towards getting close to, you know it's you know that whatever the God is, that you're trying, you're you're on a path 
trying to be sincere and get closer to him. So, yeah. and, and you can see like uh, when I mentioned these childhood actors who grow up and they fill that void because everyone now naturally wants to know why am I here, why I've been created. It's, it, it obviously went through your, your mind and yeah. you started to search and, and, you, and, you, and you went further. You didn't cover it up with all the entertainment and everything right. um, and, and just numb yourself. And that's what we see happening. People numb mm -hmm. themselves, alcohol, drugs, and they, they don't really investigate, look like you did. And it leads to a, a dark road of yeah. depression, anxiety, you know, we all experience these these things here and there, but Islam gives you the antidote and, and helps you to get through all these challenges of life. Absolutely. So now tell me this, um, when you see, because that's what the end goal is, and then people might not worship the Creator, but they end up worshiping their desires, money, fame, status. So in this industry, did you did you see like did you go to any parties? Did you get invited to some of the after the shoot? Usually they'll have like the after parties, red yeah, carpet, parties and, and like I, just observing, just observing, you know, the uh, demeanor of people, how they were. What what was your impression on? Yeah, look, I, I I've always I think one thing I've always hated is uh, one of my biggest pet peeves was the re like the red carpet, yeah. especially the way th like when we use the word celebrity. It's almost to me. It's almost like what have you done that's why why should we be celebrating this mm -hmm. you know when you use the word idol why are you looking up to this person you don't know anything about mm -hmm. their internal state right they could be the most unhappy person you're idolizing them you want to become this person and they could be absolutely depressed and you know we see it many times people that we might consider idols or that the public uh, might consider idols that end up committing suicide or you know you know d damaging themselves in ways that are are, are so terrible um, and subhanAllah, to, just to go back on your point about kind of uh, people using whatever it is to distract themselves. SubhanAllah, one thing that literally is what kind of increased me in my uh, ambition towards searching for the truth was uh, a quote that I heard. Um, I can't remember who it was that said it, but uh, it was, um, imagine that you went to sleep tonight and you woke up on a train and... You had no idea how you got there, mm -hmm. where you were going. Those would be your first questions. And th you would not care about anything else. If, if a server came by and tried to hand you champagne and people were like, don't worry about where we're going. It's, you know, we're, we're, we're having fun on this train. You would, you would be like, no, I want to know where we're going and where and how I got here and what, how, what is going on, right? And so, and who put me here? And subhanAllah, that, that is exactly uh, this life, you know? We've been put here. We don't know how we got here. We don't know where we're going. We don't know what our purpose is. Um, we don't know why we're here. And yet, you know, all these uh, these illusions and distractions, whether it's drugs and alcohol, whether it's, you know, um, distracting with media and, you know, finances and materialistic gains and whatever else, whatever our desires, our worldly desires are, those things are, are simply distractions yeah from and to keep us away from the real question and to keep us away from the truth and so when i realized okay yeah this makes a lot of sense it's the most important question to answer mm -hmm. there's nothing else that could possibly be a bigger distraction than not knowing okay so for the people who are out there they see okay hollywood actor young 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 man and now he's thinking about more serious things purpose of life right. you know why we've been created why we're we talking about god and all that and it makes sense so they're they're with you they're with us mm. okay but as soon as you just go deeper and and people start talking about uh jesus trinity mm. or other religions you know and 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 in each of these religions and what i i, I we call them man-made religions why because in one way or another you're these are things that man has developed over time and it forms into creation worship. Sure. So uh, this was something unique about your story. And then you'll lose the people. And then people, the fitra rejects this. Mm. And then people start to associate all these weird superstitions, incantations with the religion. They're like, this stuff is like, you know, way out there. It's like, and yeah. then they start looking at, at all religions as just weird and whatnot. So you wanted to poke holes in the different religions mm. and you started to examine all the different religions yeah and then you got to a point you were like either i'm going to uh you tried so hard not to be muslim yeah. and muslim is simply one who submits his or her will to god, to god. So it's not yeah. an arab in the desert or, or whatnot yeah and i'm going to die knowing is the truth or i'm going to die muslim 
So what was it about all the other religions that turned you off? And what was the, the, the main thing about Islam that turned you on? Sure, sure. So for me, um, when I started my search, I had basically a list of three criteria yes. for any book that claimed to be the word of God, any religion that claimed to be, um, uh, uh, you know, true. Yeah. My three were three criteria. Yeah, three criteria. Number one is uh, the book needs to be preserved. We need to have evidence of its preservation. Preservation. Beautiful. Yeah. You're thinking logically. OK, yeah. so preservation. So I need to know that what I'm reading today is what was revealed yeah. or what was the is in its original form. Yes. Right. Number two was there can't be a single contradiction. Because if God's the author, then you know God couldn't have a single contradiction. There, there couldn't be a contradiction in this book. Beautiful. Right. And number three, it, there has to be some sort of signs or evidences of divine knowledge, some, some something that couldn't have been known at that time, or something that human beings couldn't understand, but ha we've later, through advances in technology, been able to find out to be true. Preservation. Yeah. No contradictions and evidence that is from yeah. the creator. Yeah. It's not just blind faith. Yeah. And so this is the thing that was my was kind of the was spearheading my search. And reminds me of my journey also. Really? Same uh, thing. Allah Almost Allah. Really identical. Yes. Allah, I wanted evidence. Yeah. Sometimes you believe in God and then what? They take you down a dark road of some man made religion. Exactly. I don't want to follow man made religion. I want to follow the way of life from the creator. Absolutely. Yeah. And so I think for me it actually was very easy for most of these religions. It's very, it's very quickly that you can f start to find flaws, whether it's in, uh, you know, the Bible or, or any other books or religions, you can find the flaws in, okay, we don't have any proof this has been preserved. We can see changes in the Bible. We can see changes that have happened over time with these different religions. We, we can find contradictions, clear cut contradictions. No, there's no way to reconcile whatsoever. Um, and we don't, and we see sometimes even in these books, things that it speaks about that it gets wrong. Mm -hmm. And subhanAllah, so for me, it was actually very quickly that I was able to get through a lot of, a lot of religions until really Islam. Mm -hmm. And when I got to Islam, um, the first thing I went straight to was the preservation. Because for me, if it's not been preserved, then that, that throws out a lot of things anyways. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, preservation was number one. And uh, I got, when I started to look at, okay, number one, we have kids that are half of Quran from the age of 10 years old. So clearly we, we can be memorized. For people who have never heard this word, half is right. what, for the They're able Muslims. to memorize, right. They're able memorize to memorize the preservers yeah, of the Quran. Pr preserve the whole, entire Quran, word, letter by letter and word by word from memory. Yeah. SubhanAllah, I, I don't know. There's not a single other, you know, religion that had this uh, in, in, in it, right? Number two, we have carbon dated manuscripts back to the lifetime of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam um and and uh full manuscripts from only uh, a, a short time afterwards right um and so for me I had hard evidence from an imperial uh empir empiricism standpoint of mm -hmm. like okay uh western our western idea of what stands for evidence i have carbon dated we have carbon dated manuscripts you know so. you know about those in in birmingham i yes, think the right birmingham now. manuscript you know about that yeah, huh? yeah yeah you're looking at one of the oldest fragments of the quran ever discovered it's written on parchment most likely made from sheep or goat skin and it's been dated by experts as being more than 1300 years old and that makes it among the earliest known fragments of the quran anywhere in the world and it's here in the University of Birmingham. This remarkable document had been resting on the shelves of the University Library for decades without anybody realizing just how old it was until a researcher decided to take a closer look. The person who actually wrote it may well have known the Prophet Muhammad. He would have seen him probably. He would maybe have heard him preach. Um, he may have known him personally and that really is quite a thought to conjure with. Birmingham has one of the country's biggest Muslim communities and they have welcomed having such a treasure in their city. When I saw these pages I was very much moved and there were tears of joy and emotions in my eyes. You've done your homework, Masha. Yeah, alhamdulillah. <laughs> um, and so, so that was one thing, plus the memorization proved to me that, okay, it's, it's possible that this has been preserved. Right. And and it being possible is enough for me to, you know, not say, OK, I have I have proof it hasn't been. Right. So this is the thing is uh, any of these religions, I needed proof it hasn't been 
not proof that it has 100% been just just proof that it hasn't been and that was enough for me to you know if it if it's possible that it's been preserved then that was enough for me to put it as a point for and not against right mm -hmm. or at least put it in the middle um next came to contradictions this is what i spent the most time upon was really just trying to find a contradiction and for me my google search was literally proof the quran is wrong that that wow. was it Proof. Contradictions in the Quran. Proof Islam is false. These You're really trying not to be Muslim. No, yeah, of course. I mean, I don't want to be upon anything that isn't the truth, right? Yeah. And so if somebody out there has found a reason why Islam is false, I want to listen to them. I want to be convinced by them. Um, because we know, I mean, it, it's no question what it means. It, there's a lot of sacrifices that you have to make. There's a lot of restrictions that you, you have to follow. So you've listened to a lot of these Islamophobes' career People who are in it just for, you know, all day and night. They don't call oh people gosh. to their religion, Christianity or whatever religion. They just spend all their effort yeah. on trying to disprove Islam. It's you listen sad. to a lot of it's those. It's sad, huh? man. Yeah. It, it really is. It's almost like, it, you said it, right? You said it. it they basically, their entire life mission <laughs> is to disprove Islam and not even yeah. to prove their own religion. Uh -huh. Even we see ex-Muslims that will like make their entire, entire, uh, YouTube channel about not being an ex-Muslim and it's like their whole identity is the fact that they left Islam mm -hmm. like something there already tells you that there's there's not that much sincerity and more a emotional hatred or dis dislike mm -hmm. with uh, with Islam or Muslims whatever it may be yeah and even most of these ex-Muslims they never actually practiced Islam they never searched into Islam and even if you listen to their arguments of why they left Islam or why they dislike Islam a lot of the times it's purely emotional. It's purely this is happening here or this like and it's mm -hmm. it has nothing to do with a logical conclusion. Yeah. OK, yeah. let's go back to uh, before you uh, you were talking about contradictions, but let's sure. give them a real life example. Now you are. Uh, are you Arab? No, I'm not. No. Are you fluent in Arabic? I'm not fluent in Arabic. OK, no. uh, neither am I. I'm not Arab, um, but you're going to go ahead. And when we talk about preservation, every Muslim uh, one who is submitted to the will of God is a Muslim, is, as I said before, and Islam is submission to the will of God, is striving to preserve, to memorize some of the Quran mm. and their prayers and and then the different uh, surahs that we have. Right. You've already memorized some of the Quran. Can you go ahead and share some of the memorization with the opening chapter, the Al-Fatiha? Oh, sure, Can sure. Can you recite that for us? Yeah, yeah sure. Yes. A'udhu billahi minash rajim بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين. ما شاء الله. الحمد لله. الحمد لله. So this is how the Quran. We have we often have a, a saying that you can take all the books in the world, throw them in the ocean, lock yes. them up in a safe, get rid of all of them, and if they're gone, you wouldn't be able to bring them back. But that's how the Quran has been preserved. It's the only text that you can actually bring back with people like this who are memorizing it and reciting it not arabs the quran is eternal literally it, it's eternal it, it, there is nothing other than allah subhanahu mm -hmm. wa ta'ala that could stop the quran from being preserved and if people would just take the meaning of this verse it's calling upon the creator for guidance yeah acknowledging you know the, obviously the the meaning and everything and it's like it's almost like somewhat like the the lord's prayer yeah you know, Lord's prayer, oh, our Father who art built, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom right. come, thy, thy will be done. This is thy will be done is Islam, right? right? Submission to the will of God. And it's, 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 it's amazing. So we gave them example of the preservation, the contradictions. You yes. were talking about finding no contradictions. Now you have people try to, you know, like the Islam, they'll bring something up and then they don't go to an expert and then they'll think, oh, I got you here, but you got through all that also, all those yeah. games that they play, huh? Yeah, so it's tough. It's tough to do. Like, I'll be honest, having the amount of free time that I did <laughs> is really what helped me. I don't know how I would have, I, 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 I don't know how I would have navigated it. Um, it's really tough to navigate because you have so many people, especially in um, non-debate contexts, right? Where you're just, it's just one guy in his room or wherever it may be speaking 
whatever he wants to speak to a camera and if enough people want to listen and hear and if it makes enough people happy they'll get views right and people will believe it even though no one's fact checked him no one's no one of knowledge has actually come to you know debate or counter his arguments he's simply just a random guy speaking for all anybody knows right um so for me i literally had to do what what you're saying is i had to you know listen to a guy whatever he says what, however wrong it may be i didn't know it was wrong so i would listen to him then i would go and find the counter argument yeah right yeah. for for every single video or every single article that i was reading i would find the argu counter argument and then i would find the counter to the counter argument and then i would go back and forth and keep doing this until i came to my own decision on what seemed the most rational and and, and logical opinion um and then once that that singular topic was uh was clarified for me I would move on to the next one and I would just do this. And this is what literally took me. I've spent six, seven hours a day for four or five months uh, doing this locked in my room, just research. Were you within yourself uh, asking, seeking, saying, guide me in, in whatever words you were saying? Were you asking uh, w however you called upon the creator for guidance? Yeah. You know, personally, I wasn't even I don't think it was an out loud thing, but internally, in your heart, internally, in yeah. internally, absolutely. Internally, I, I, I knew that. Look, I, whatever, the, whatever this journey leads me to, whatever I, I end up upon, I know that I've been searching for a connection with God. I okay. know I've been searching for the truth. Well, now, when you say God in your heart, were you saying, okay, Jesus, Muhammad, were you calling upon? I was a, calling upon the creator of the, the world. The creator, that's it. The creator of the universe. That's it. Um, wh how, whatever and however that um, was, I didn't know. And I, and I always tell people that's the simple thing to do. It's simple so homework. Simple. It's call upon the one who created you. Yeah. As soon as you put an intermediate between you and God, you messed it up. Yeah. So yeah. So this is something that again goes with the innate nature. Call upon the one who created the one that Jesus prayed to. Let's talk about Jesus. So. Oh, please. Now talk to me here. You talk about also this journey. You, uh, and this is in no way disrespecting our our, our brothers and sisters out there of any other religions, but just pointing out some of the obvious to have people to think and. Um, your love for Jesus. We often mm. say that, you know, Jesus, peace be upon him. Uh, upon when you him. accept Islam, you truly know his message. You truly love him, his blessed mm. mother. What's your relationship with, with Jesus is now? And why didn't you end up like Justin Bieber taking Jesus as God? Right. Um, yes, Paolo. So I didn't, I, because I didn't come from a Christian background, I kind of, um, I, I was I was waiting to, I was still needing to be convinced by Christianity. Whereas, you know, uh, many people who maybe come from Christianity or are born into a Christian household, that love for Jesus or that, you know, that experience of having Jesus's name spoken all around the house and stuff and everywhere you go is already there for them. Um, so for me, my first really, okay, who is Jesus? You know, obviously I hear, hear him spoken about in some songs and whatever it may be. And I know cri what Christianity is, but um, who is this guy Jesus, you know? And why do Christians believe that he's God? Um, and so when I started to do my research, especially into the Bible, you know, going through those three things, preservation, uh, no contradictions, and uh, divine uh, knowledge or some sort of uh, evidences of uh, being from the Creator, um, I found with uh, Christianity, you know, I was, ha I was having a hard time with those things. But one thing I did find interesting was the fact that you have different accounts of the same guy, Isa alayhi salam, or Jesus Christ's life. Right. You have the same you have people saying that he spread a certain message that he, you know, performed miracles that he was, you know, preaching and, and, and trying to sp spread a message. And so for me, that still seemed interesting. OK, you have different accounts of the same man. They're all saying the same thing or similar things. Uh, while I found contradictions in them, that didn't negate the fact that these are this. There's still some evidences or truth to this. And so, subhanAllah, the more that I started to really, at the start, I veered away from Christianity. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, I, I can't really follow this because it hasn't been preserved and there's contradictions. I can't, I can't believe that this is exactly from God. All right, stop right there. So uh, you, uh, you figured out uh, that Matthew didn't write Matthew, Luke didn't write Luke. People, of course, call the gospel books Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Well, they call them Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John because we don't know who wrote these books, and there's no point calling them Sam, Fred, Jerry, and Harry. I mean, they're, they're written by people we don't know who they were written by. They are anonymous. You might not think so because they have the title, The Gospel According to Matthew. Whoever put that title on it was an editor later. The followers of Jesus were Aramaic-speaking peasants from Galilee, lower-class men who were not educated. 
In fact, Peter and John in Acts chapter 4, verse 13, are literally said to be illiterate. They couldn't read and write. Of course not. They were fishermen. They didn't go to school. The vast majority of people in the ancient world never learned to read, let alone write. And their native language was Aramaic. These books are written in Greek by highly educated, rhetorically trained writers who are skilled in Greek composition. Yeah. The four Gospels are anonymous books. You figured all yes, this out. Yes, and these yes. are Christian scholars telling us. Yes, yes. So Christian you, scholars. And this is the thing. It's like... Christians will will unknowledgeable Christians will 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 not know this. Yeah. But knowledgeable Christians will stipulate. You've really done your that. homework. Yeah. yeah. So you figured that out. Okay. And then you give an example of the. Uh, uh, you talk about the Trinity not making sense. Yeah. Can you touch upon that? Yeah. Sure. For me, uh, I mean, there's just the idea of three all powerful uh, beings, but one are all powerful. To me, number one didn't make sense. Number two. When I started to really look into, you know, I, I came back to starting to look at Christianity a second time, um, closer to the end of my search before getting to Islam. And subhanAllah, that's when I really started to see these uh, Christian and Muslim debates. And when I started to see these debates, uh, a lot of the time they would speak about, okay, this, this guy Jesus couldn't have been God. You know, he, number one, he says, uh, none knows uh, the hour no. except the Father, right? Um, and so right away, if you have three, if you're speaking about a trinity where they're three all-powerful, co-equal, um, but one all-powerful, then they should all have the same knowledge. They should be all, all knowledgeable, all wise. Yet, you know, Isa alayhi salam didn't know the hour. He, he goes to look at a, 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 a he, he sees a tree, tree. Uh, from, a, from a distance and says, let me go over to see if there's some fruits. And he only has to walk up to the tree to see that there's no fruits on the tree. These, these are not attributes of an all knowledge. And this is no disrespect to Jesus. No, no, or not at all. This no. is pointing out the obvious yeah. that he's not all knowing, that he didn't claim to be God. He sought he, guidance from his from creator, God. Yeah. put his head on the ground. Right, he's depicted prayed like Muslims. Yeah, prayed like Muslims. He's depicted even even though like of course we don't depict any of our prophets. He's depicted by the Christians wearing white thobe with a beard. To me, it was saying, like saying "Assalamu alaikum." Yeah, peace be with you. Yeah, <laughs> Subhanallah. It, to me, it was just like all the soy, all the signs are pointing you to his to yeah, Islam, to Islam, him and being a Muslim. Subhanallah. So that was even my first like, oh, what is what is Islam? Because mm -hmm. honestly, Islam wasn't even. Uh, on my radar in yeah. terms of uh, a religion that I was going to take seriously and search and search like yeah. and go down until this until seeing that I literally opened up a world religions book and I went through them like one by one multiple and I saw in each of the different religions that are out there there's so many and this is what people often say like oh you know they're all religions how can they all be wrong how can everybody mm -hmm. so they just throw everything out in the garbage but one by one, all the religions in one sense or another didn't have the preservation, didn't have the proof. And in one way or another, they're calling to creation worship, worshiping ancestors, fires, Zoroastrianism, yeah. worshiping uh, so many gods and uh, animals and all yeah. sorts of weird things. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think the beautiful thing as well is I had a friend of mine, actually, who's uh, who kind of asked me when, once I came, once I came, when I accepted Islam and I told him, um, and he's been super supportive, but he he was very curious, like, how, why do you pick Islam? Like, you know, because I, I've seen things in the Bible that make sense, and I've seen things in this that make sense, and I've seen things in all these uh, all these religions. He was specifically talking about the Abrahamic ones. Mm -hmm. And I said, subhanAllah, you know, you know, honestly, I would have had a very hard time reconciling this until you learned that it's all from the same creator. Mm -hmm. That, you know, the things that, that stopped uh, Judaism from continuing, from continuing, from continuating, and uh, Christianity from continuing, is simply the lack of preservation. Mm -hmm. You know, th these books were corrupted by man over time, and so there was a necessity for another prophet to come, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, to bring the final testament, right? And um, and Subhanallah, when you realize that, when you realize that this is all just a continuation, mm -hmm. that we we all worship the same God, um, then you know. Subhanallah, that makes it that makes everything make infinitely more sense. Yeah, it makes sense that uh, the first man he was told Adam, yep. Adam uh, peace be upon him, he was told to submit his will to God. That's what Islam means. Mm -hmm. He was doing Islam. He was a Muslim who submitted his will, and then it just kept going. The chronological order it just mm -hmm. kept going. God Almighty would send guidance, yep. and some people went and deviated away from that guidance, started worshiping the creation, and started to form their own religions. That's how man-made religions came. And then Allah, the Creator, God Almighty, would send revelation. 
And it was the same message, worship one and only one God. Yeah. And you see that in the Bible, Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one, not three and one or Trinity. And then it just kept going until the last and final messenger. So it's it makes just total sense that, that it wasn't a, a different religion with every messenger. That was sure. ma contradictory messages. Yeah. Worship one God, be morally upright. Yeah, Don't worship right. the creation. Simple yeah. as that. Very simple. Very straightforward. Yeah. And I think the fitra, what we talked about earlier, it, it, it gravitates towards that. It is that. It absolutely. And even even any non-Muslim that I've met that's maybe agnostic or, or just, you know, believes in God, you realize that their belief in God is a Muslim belief in God. Yeah. An all-powerful being, one being that we can't uh, I really understand or conceptualize in terms of how that being looks or is, um, you know. Th they th those people believe in that and so my next question always to them is so let's say because you believe there's a god you believe there's something some being that created the universe um number one why do you think that is and number two don't you think that we should try and develop some sort of relationship and if we should try and develop some sort of relationship what type of relationship is appropriate for the creation to have to its creator mm -hmm. And some t the most of the time they'll say I don't know, but I'll always push forward and 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 propose the idea that the only the only logical relationship that we could have with our all-knowing Creator is one of submission, mm -hmm. is one of complete and utter uh, submission and subservient, because because that Creator would know everything about us, knows what's best for us, knows what's right and wrong, uh, you know, and and knows everything. Mm -hmm. So for us to even say to go against that creator's will is in itself illogical because that creator we're we're basically stipulating okay I know more than you which would be false right? I um, mean this is this uh, God willing inshallah this can be a benefit for so many people especially the the youth out there the young ones like yourself um uh when someone long, young like yourself a lot of many of times you have um People your age, unfortunately, they are spending all their time just uh, the young woman that way age trying to impress the boys and, uh, and then the boys using the women and then the parties and locked up in your basement smoking the dope and the hunja and whatever it's called nowadays mm. and um, drinking drugs, alcohol. And they're far away from even thinking about and contemplating the purpose of life. Why am I here? But to look at yourself, you know, to look at you and see how you've taken that deep dive you know you've contemplated purpose also probably thinking about death what happens when i die young people die right and you could be gone at any time and to really take that uh step forward and to please your creator instead of just pleasing uh the people and the fans and the, getting the likes and this mm. that and the other it's very impressive alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. i think uh, you know subhanallah I, I i really truly believe that you know you, th there is only one thing that we should spend our time doing, and it is, you know, searching for a, a greater purpose. Because if there isn't one, then everything we're doing is meaningless, anyways. Mm, if you there know? isn't one, it's all meaningless. If what's the point? One, yeah. So what's the point? Wh wh why not do whatever? Why not destroy yourself? Where, where's the morality? Where's what's right or wrong? How do you know what's good and bad? There isn't anything. Mm -hmm. um, and when you realize that then the only next thing to do is really start that search. And I truly believe if you're sincere upon that search, if you're really looking for the truth, um, you're looking for whatever that truth is, you know, you then you have no, there's, there should be no shame to call out to God, even though you're not following a religion yet, even though you might not have the connection that God wants you to have with him yet, you know, even though you're not following his religion, um, ask for guidance. And if you're sincere upon it, no, there's nothing that will come to you but guidance. Beautiful advice. Yeah. Tell me this. Uh, we're almost out of time. Um, sure. How did you deal with many times, you know, people go away from um, looking at the simple things that Islam, the, the beautiful teachings of Islam, you know, the mm. worship of one and only one God, the creator, not the creation, being morally upright, staying away from all of the things that harm society, harm yourself. It's an instruction manual from how to go to the bathroom, how to be a good husband, how to be a good wife, how to be a good businessman, how to be a good citizen. Everything is there, all good things, yeah. right? Charity, kindness, uh, the best of you are those who are best in character. Mm. Then they jump to the penal code. It's like 1%, 2%. It's like I compare it to Martians coming down 
and they want to know about the United States, and you tell them about the electric chair, you tell them about the death penalty, right? Yeah. Uh, and then you don't tell them about, about all the other beautiful things right. that uh, this land has to offer, mm. uh, the Constitution has to offer, and whatnot. Uh, how did you also deal with that? You know, people call, oh, Islam is jihad and right. uh, terrorism and all this other nonsense. What? Yeah. How did you deal with that? Yeah, I think uh, I think a lot of the time those those questions they come from uh, they're they're actually not tackling the main question, and a, a lot of the time I ask this to any friend that asks me those types of questions. I say, let's let's put that to the side. Let's put that on pause for a second, and let me ask you, if you had an envelope. Okay, and you knew inside that envelope was a message and instructions from the creator of the universe. Mm -hmm. And then you opened the envelope and you didn't understand what it was telling you to do. You thought something was wrong, but you knew 100% this is from an all-knowing creator that has your best interest in mind. Would you follow it or would you say, forget about this? Mm -hmm. And honestly, I've had some people that say, I don't know. I've had some people that say, I would follow it. And I've had some people that say, well, th those are the only two options. Those are the two answers I've ever gotten because the third one actually doesn't make any sense, right? And so, and so I think similarly in this in this situation, the question really shouldn't be about the te the teachings and rulings of Islam. Obviously, we can ask those and look for the wisdoms and understandings behind it. But the main question should be: Is this from the Creator? And if it is, then the next answer is submit. Right. And so if we have the evidences, what wouldn't make sense is if there weren't any evidences and proofs. Right. That wouldn't be fair. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, there would be no there would be no justice if there was no proof and evidences, if there was no way to know that Islam is the truth. But we we're just told, OK, submit. But no, there are evidences and proofs. Allah has provided us with the uh, uh, with knowledge and intellect. And he's provided us with the ability to use that intellect to come to a conclusion. And that conclusion can only be that there is one God and that Muhammad is the final messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And so um, that was that's the first thing I would say. And number two, I would say as well, you know, where do you get your morality from? Mm, where do you get what's good right point, and wrong? Solid, yeah. Yeah. Well, how how can you say that anything is right and wrong without uh, a, an an external source? Because y for for the atheist, you have just as much a leg to stand on as the serial killer, as whatever, the, the person committing the most heinous crimes, you have just as much of a, a, a moral leg to stand on in terms of saying what's right and wrong as that person. You know, what makes you different than anybody else saying, no, this is fine. And this is what we see happening in the West with all types of morality going down drains, right? Because, because nobody can, s there's no objective what's right and wrong in their eyes. Therefore, then everything is right. Mm -hmm. When, 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 how did it feel taking uh, your shahada? And when you say the shahada, when you said that there's nothing worthy of worship except the creator of the heavens, and Allah, Muhammad mm -hmm. is the messenger, peace be to be upon him. Many people don't know that. That automatically includes, doesn't exclude Jesus, Moses, Abraham, all the preceding messengers. Mm -hmm. This is one of the articles of faith. You believe yeah. in all of them too. Just that Muhammad, peace be upon him, he's the last. Absolutely. How did that moment finally you took your shahada? How was that moment? I think it's like, it's a, it's a big step, you know, because... Subhanallah, then then it's time for your actions to follow your words mm -hmm. right and those words mean nothing without following them with actions and so for me that 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 was the main thing is like if i when i say these words right now you know i i now my life is going to change i know it's only for the better but that doesn't mean i'm not worried or scared or nervous about any fallouts that might happen obviously i know it's for the better and it's for the sake of god and so if it's for the sake of god then only good can come out of it um, but I think for me, it was really, subhanAllah, I, I honestly have like, it's very weird, uh, a thing with me where I just, to me, I've always kind of, when my opinions changed, I accept, okay, this is what I believe now. And this is what makes the most sense. And I'm, and I'll just continue with my life. You know, it's like, I, I said, okay, I'm Muslim now. Now, what do I have to do? You know, it, there wasn't this big moment of like, uh, you know, this, I, I've always felt like. Uh, it was simply just the next step in my journey mm -hmm. and I've always been open to my life changing Yes, um, so it, it was a very what really hit me was like afterwards Yes, you know I would say my next month in the I spent Ramadan in Indonesia and so I think I had a lot of time to reflect and, and be alone because I went there all by myself and that was really uh, where I started to realize that you know my my life 
uh, is going to be so much more enriched with purpose and and meaning and uh and you know a connection with god is something that i never knew you could even have mm-hmm. right a connection with uh, a supreme being supernatural is real um to me that even just that and knowing i could have a connection i can put my head on the ground and speak to my creator these are all things that as an atheist you don't even you don't realize how much value there is in that uh, last question uh for the uh, justin beaver justin beaver himself mm. and other childhood act uh, actors out there hollywood actors who might watch this and mm. they got that void and they're not happy they might be indulging in many things they shouldn't be but they're looking at you they're inspired by you what advice do you have for them i would say honestly to to look at your life and decide how and understand that you know we don't know when we die mm. and really conceptualize that because i think people know that they don't know when they die but we don't live our life like that and so i would say once you once you conceptualize the fact that you could you could not be here tomorrow then you need to figure out you know how do you want to spend the time that you have and that time in my opinion i think should only be spent uh in in searching for a purpose you know because if we if we don't have one then you can do whatever so at least search, you know, at least be sincere. Ask the creator of the universe if you already believe in God. Ask the creator of the universe to guide you. And if you don't believe in God, do your research sincerely. Be open-minded to the idea that there may be a creator of the universe. Um, and listen to people, you know. Don't, don't, don't close yourself off to anything right away. Be sincere. And inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide you. Beautiful advice. I enjoyed that. speaking with you, talking with you. I'll continue to bless you, I mean, young brother. I mean, I and thank you guys. I told you I was inspired. Hope you're inspired also. And I want to give you a gift. I want to give you the Quran. Many of these things we're talking about, all of them, they're in this book. This is the Quran. You get it for free. Go to thedeanshow.com. If you still have any questions, give us a call at 1-800-662-ISLAM. Take the advice that he gave this young brother. And you want to know purpose, search for purpose, and ask the one who created you for a purpose. Creator of heavens and earth. Thank you very much. Until then, peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum. We know there are many benefits to the use of black seed according to the authentic statements of the Prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him. That's why I use the black seed by Tasneem. And 50% of the profits from your order will go towards establishing the Dean Center, the Masjid and Megadawa Center. Use promo code the Dean Show for 15% off.